Looking for simple and fun ball themed toddler activities to do at home this year using items you probably already have? Look no further. Today I'm bringing you nine or 10 ball inspired toddler activities. You guys can go ahead and use these on Thanksgiving day to keep your toddler entertained while you're cooking or while the adults are doing their thing or if you guys are just spending it at home just you guys and want to make the day a little extra special. I hope these come in handy. If you're new here, I'm Rachel from the Confused Millennial. Welcome to my channel. I will leave a link in the description box for more detailed instructions for all of these things, as well as links to my past toddler activity videos. So let's jump into them. Feed the turkey. For this, you're gonna need some sort of jar. You can use a tissue box, you can use an old coffee canister. Those are the two I'd recommend, but you could also use a mason jar or even like a solo cup and then paint it either brown or black or you could always just take some brown or black construction paper and cover it. The big key here is we want to make sure that your child won't be able to see inside. We're gonna be kind of creating almost like an object permanence box a little bit. Next we're gonna need some sort of lid which is why I say I like the tissue box and I like the coffee canister the most because the tissue box already has its little lid done for you. Coffee canister you'll just cut whatever shape so if you're giving your child balls you'll cut a round shape if you're giving them cards you can cut little like coin slot my suggestion would be depending on how old your toddler is to make it more challenging cut it just the right size for that ball so this way your toddler will have to use a little bit of force to push the ball down it won't just easily drop in if you're using a solo cup or a mason jar so ran wrap will probably work and you'll just fold that over a few times and then cut a slit so it'll be kind of similar to a tissue box opening and then we we're just going to decorate this turkey you can use real feathers or you can use construction paper to cut out feather shapes putting that on the back side you can use googly eyes or you can go ahead and just print out some eyes however you want to do this have fun with it if you have older kids around they can always help out in making this a fun little turkey craft for you guys to do one afternoon. So it ends up becoming multiple activities. And then you'll just give this to your toddler with some pom-poms, balls, different colored cards or pieces of paper, whatever you went with. If you use balls, I would suggest also giving them some sort of scooper. So this could literally just be a ladle from your kitchen. They may use it, they may not. It's just another option available to them. And you may need to model this a few times for them until they get the hang of it, depending on how old your child is. I'm calling this one turkey run. So for it, you're going to you need three paper towel rolls like the inside or you can use one long one from like gift wrapping and just cut it into three pieces either red orange and yellow paint or red orange and yellow construction paper and we're going to be covering each one of those rolls in one color so one roll will end up being red one roll will end up being orange one roll will end up being yellow and then we're going to make a turkey shape just cut out kind of a peanut shape form throw on some googly eyes, use some red or orange paper to make the turkey bill and turkey gully and have fun with it. What you're gonna do is take your colored paper towel rolls. From here on out, I'm gonna refer to these as the turkey feathers. And what you're gonna do is just tape those onto your wall using a little painter's tape or masking tape. Once your turkey feathers are on the wall, we'll take our turkey form and just tape that on top. It looked like this, a little turkey form. Next, you'll go ahead and give your toddler some pom-poms, balls, even hair ties have worked, I've used them. You can also give them a few different sized objects, so like some smaller balls, some larger ones, just let them drop things down and see the cause and effect of it. If you have an older toddler, you could always work on color sorting. Give them red items to put down the red feather. Give them orange ones to go down the orange feather. You could also put different colored baskets at the bottom and have them sort the colors that way. So trying to get all of the red ones over here, trying to get all of the yellow ones over there type of thing. And that's it. Super simple, super low mess using things you probably already have at home. Fall all smelling jars. So this is actually a Montessori sensorial activity that builds vocabulary, explores new foods, and of course works on their sense of smell. <laughs> so ideally you are going to have identical amber jars. That's like the most traditional Montessori way of doing this. Since I'm gonna venture to guess that most of us, including myself, do not have a set of amber jars lying around, you could also just use some Dixie cups or whatever cups you have that are not 
see through and you have enough of them for each of the different types of smells we are going to make. So first we're gonna kind of come up with our list of smells that we wanna do here. Personally, I would suggest just opening up your spice cabinet or looking at like your Thanksgiving day menu. Some ideas for this would be cinnamon, clove, pumpkin pie spice, oranges, apple, vanilla extract. It doesn't need to be anything super crazy. You could also do your actual like Thanksgiving food. So like turkey, cornbread casserole, whatever you got going on in the kitchen this year. And you can also mix the scents together. So like you could do one as just vanilla extract and then one as vanilla extract with brown sugar. Talk to them about how one smells sweeter, one smells more pungent. Of course, if you're using vanilla extract with a toddler, just to be on the safe side, I would suggest making sure your vanilla extract is alcohol free. I don't know if there's fumes and we don't need any toddlers drunk on vanilla extract fume. So like I said, for the most Montessori experience, all of the cups should look and feel the same. For instance, an orange slice in one and a few drops of vanilla extract in another is going to feel different. So how we're gonna work around that is by adding a cotton ball to the bottom of each of your smelling jars and then adding the scent on top of it. So for instance, in this cup here, I have a cotton ball and I'm squeezing an orange slice over it. In this cup here, I have a cotton ball and I'm adding a few drops of vanilla extract. If my daughter shakes these, they will feel the same to her. She won't be able to tell what the differences are by shaking them or by looking at them. She has to use her sense of smell. Once you got all of your scents taken care of, you will want to cover these up using either like a cheesecloth or a gauze. If you have those mason jars that have the opening lid, you could always twist the lid right on top of that. You could secure the gauze or cheesecloth on using hot glue, rubber band, duct tape, whatever. And then you're just gonna go ahead and give these jars to your toddler. You'll definitely need to model it for them at first. Smelling them, and honestly, once you start smelling them and they get the idea that each one smells differently, they'll probably stay entertained themselves. Now, if you wanna make this more of a learning experience, you could go ahead and describe what you're smelling and work on expanding their vocabulary. This is also a really good trick. You don't need to go through the full on jar activity, but the simple act of smelling different foods is a really good trick for picky eaters. My daughter would always pull out oranges from our fridge and make me cut them up, but she would never eat them. So finally one day I was like, you know what? Mindful eating here. I'm gonna go ahead and sniff this orange in front of her and sure enough, she started sniffing the orange too and within minutes she finally started eating oranges. Just the simple act of smelling the food, especially if on your Thanksgiving table there's going to be a lot of new foods, if they've gotten the opportunity to smell some of them beforehand, it could make them a little more likely to actually try tasting them. That's your fall smelling jars. Contact paper tree. For this you'll need some contact paper you can get at the Dollar Tree. For older toddlers you could go ahead and just cut this into a square and draw a tree form on to it. But for younger toddlers, I would suggest cutting out an actual tree form because they probably don't understand the concept of staying inside the lines yet. And you'll just tape this onto a wall or a door using some scotch tape or painter's tape or masking tape, whatever you have on hand. And then basically just going to give them supplies to go ahead and decorate their tree. This could be tissue paper or you could use actual items that you've scavenged outside, some lightweight twigs. I wouldn't go with super heavy bricks because it might not stay on the contact paper. Any leaves that you guys have picked up on the ground. And you can even make that a toddler activity in itself. We're gonna go outside and scavenge some fall foliage. You could also give your toddler a tweezer, really working on that pincer grass. Or if they wanna just use their bare hands, that'll work too. My daughter had a ton of fun with this. Now we're gonna shift into some pumpkins and gourd activities because I know at least some of you still have some pumpkins and gourds laying around, whether you're planning on using them on your fall table skin or they have just been taunting you on your patio, porch, whatever it might be. We're gonna put them to good use. First up, you're gonna take some pumpkins and take a pack of stickers and literally give that to your toddler. And now we have pumpkin sticker scrapbooking fun. I got this idea from my friend Callie at Butt First Coffee in her Halloween toddler activity video. Tried it with my daughter. She had an absolute blast. Next, we're gonna give our pumpkins a bath. And very simple, you'll just get a bin or you can always use your kitchen sink. Fill that up with some soapy water, 
throw the pumpkins in, let your toddler go to town. If you want to, you can always add in a toothbrush, a rag, a sponge, give them some sort of tool to clean the pumpkins with. My daughter had a blast doing this with just her bare hands. She also loved it when I went ahead and gave her a sponge and a rag. See which one your child likes. Don't stress if you forget to give them a sponge or a rag either though, because they are going to have fun no matter what. Next are rubber band pumpkins. So for this, you don't want like super tiny rubber bands that are on their last leg when stretched around your pumpkin, because obviously we don't want rubber bands to like snap our children and then we have a crying toddler and that would be a whole nightmare. Instead, what we wanna do is find rubber bands that are a little bit looser, and we are just going to go ahead and cover the pumpkin in a bunch of rubber bands. And then you may need a model taking off the rubber bands for them a few times. They may get it right away. For older toddlers, if you're using different types of rubber bands, so like different colors, different sizes, you could also give them a few different bowls or plates so they can sort them as they take them off. My personal suggestion would be to just like throw out all three pumpkin activities let your kid go to town. My daughter with like the pumpkin stickers and the pumpkin rubber bands, they held her attention for like 10, 15 minute increments and then she was off to the next thing, which is why I like the idea of being able to do so many things with pumpkins because it gives you the opportunity to set up a few different things very quickly if your child is cycling through them very quickly. I feel like all the key to all toddler activities is just finding new containers or new ways to present the same activity. Like that seems to be the real trick in keeping a child this age entertained. Check out those seven other toddler activities using household items here and I also have a Montessori friendly toddler gift guide that you guys have been loving so I will leave a link to that here and in the description box as well if you guys try any of these I would love to see it feel free to tag me on Instagram at the confused millennial if you have any questions at all my name is Rachel have a happy fall